Hello, I'd like to talk today about uh, the changes I've been seeing on the coral reefs of the Marshall Islands. I could also call this the sliding baseline. Ten years of gradual uh, degradation on Madro Atoll, or even Requiem for a coral reef ecosystem. First, let's get ourselves oriented. Um, the Marshall Islands are located roughly halfway between Hawaii and Australia and cover an area about the size of Texas. The capital atoll is Madro, which is one of the less desirable atolls that the um, Japanese decided not to use for a base, which is why the U.S. Um, made it their base during the uh, liberation of the Marshall Islands. I've had the great fortune of being able to visit 10 outer atolls, diving or snorkeling on over 80 sites. Majuro has a sister atoll called Arno, which is much less populated. On Majuro, I've explored over 75 sites and on Arno, over 30 sites. On Madro, I'm going to be referring to a number of neighborhoods. Laura used to be the main island, um, but because of the airport and the port, um, the downtown is now the population center. Woja, Ajiltaki, Rairak used to be individual islands. Note the location of the airport and the bridge, and also Uliga Dock. This site in Ajiltaki is quite uh, characteristic. Note how narrow this strip of land is, um, barely able to fit two rows of homes and a small road. I'm going to be showing a lot of coral from this site. population on this atoll is over 25,000, probably closer to 30,000. 99% live on the southern edge of the atoll, uh, the great majority of them um, downtown. Note the location of the sewage outfall and also uh, dump leachate in Rye Rock. Historically, uh, less than a thousand Marshallese lived quite sustainably on each atoll. I've been diving here for 10 years, um, taking my college students snorkeling. It's been a great privilege to introduce these students to their own reefs, because often this is the very first time they've swum on the ocean side, partly due to an exaggerated and irrational fear of reef sharks which are really quite docile. But it is truly a joy to see the students come alive in these um, lovely reefs where we find lionfish, turtles. This hawksbill turtle is less edible than the green turtle, so it's not quite as shy. Barracuda, even a rare 20-foot beaked whale that was quite tame. Uh, rays, thousands of flagtail fish. I've been taking series to document the ordinary patterns of coral growth, such as this Acropora clathrata over several years, and you can distinctly see the annual growth bands. This uh, branching staghorn coral reached a certain size um, and began attracting fish. And when you look at a reef, it looks timeless, made of rocky, slow-growing organisms. And changes can be gradual, operating on a coral-by-coral -coral basis. But if one looks closely at the right place, you can actually witness daily changes. One of the things I wondered when I came to the Marshall Islands is how have these reefs been changing? 
and one could assume that an outer island like Arno, with low population, represents a fairly pristine um, condition. Outer islands, at least some of them, still have healthy shark populations, such as here in Rongelap. Next door, Rongerik has good Napoleon wrasse populations. This is a widely um, overfished species. And on the outer islands, one finds that almost always the dominant coral is Isopora, seen here with the club-shaped white-tipped branches. Isopora can be joined by several other species, these platy montipora, other uh, more finely branched parietes. But compare this to Madro, this is near the bridge, um, you will find no Isopora at all and very low coral diversity. You can see a diver here for scale. These table corals um, two to three or even five or six meters across are often diseased and they're surrounded by very small short-lived Acropora species. Further to the west, past the airport, you can find Isopora, but sadly most of it has been recently killed. Uh, you can see the dead Isopora as the dark brown areas. And notice that the tips marked in green represent the last upper bits of tissue that has not yet been killed by disease. Further to the west, in Woja, um, you also see lots of dead coral. This is the drop-off, and you can see that most of the parietes, uh, the big boulder corals, are dead. It's quite probable that this is what Madro used to look like, uh, just like Lickia, one of the northern atolls. Isopora, very healthy coral. Here's the drop-off on Lickiep, and all you see is healthy coral down to quite a substantial depth. In some of the shallow reef shelves on Lickiep, you find other corals, again, species that are not found on Madro. When you go to the shallow lagoon habitat, you find lots of Acropora, but especially a massive species called Astriopora, shown by the arrows. Here's lots more with various pastel shades in um, Jaluit Lagoon, joined by a number of brain corals. At an intermediate depth, such as this Arno Reef, you find other massive species, Symphilia, Platygyra, Lobophilia, and again, um, extremely healthy coral. Healthy reefs beyond Madro are colorful. You see blue corals, um, this lovely Montipra, shades of brown and green and aqua. Here in Arno, you see a species of Symphilia, lovely round disc, never found on Madro. On outer islands, you find very large colonies of this yellow turbinaria. This is a species quite rare and often diseased on Madro. And you're more likely to find colorful giant anemones on the outer islands. In passes, these absolutely gorgeous lace corals, Stylaster, can be very abundant. They've gone missing on Madro. And here's some other typical outer island species of coral. Note the pink coloration in the lower left. That is healthy coral and algae, which again is hard to find on Majora. One of my favorite corals is this elephant skin, or Pachycerus plate coral. I used to find it uh, near the drop-off on Madro, but it's disappeared. It's quite um, abundant and healthy 
here on Iluk, one of the northern atolls. And again in Iluk, at 30 meters in the lagoon, I found this extremely rare species of Hidnophora. We'll be talking later about Hidnophora, um, a massive rounded species. Outer islands have very clean water, while on Majuro the visibility has been very much reduced by um, particulates. So the conclusion that is very easy to draw is that the outer islands have very, very healthy, beautiful reefs. And in fact, Majuro used to have one of these reefs located in the far remote northwestern corner of the lagoon. It was very, very diverse, one of the best I've seen until after 2004, a crown of thorn outbreak destroyed this coral. This is in 2002. You see high diversity, beautiful, healthy coral. And when I came back in 2007, this is what I found. Dead coral covered in algae. The Cranothorans even attacked the massive boulder coral, the Parides, in places killing over half of them. And here's the crown of thorns. There's a hypothesis that these animals respond to ocean-wide oceanographic changes sweeping from east to west, starting in Hawaii, for example, and ending up in Guam. Perhaps higher upwelling rates, greater phytoplankton growth, causes greater survival in the lar larval starfish. But this doesn't make sense based on what I've seen in the Marshall Islands, where Majuro is one of the only atolls to suffer this plague. More recently, the near shore of Arno is suffering an outbreak. The result is a desolate moonscape of dead reefs. Certain parts of Majuro have suffered several decades of crown of thorn predation, leaving very little living coral left.